Hello everyone, welcome to the channel for a new video. Let's get started, homies. So, in today's video, we're going to be doing a pro guide for my sensibility in Apex Legends. And this video is going to be two languages. So, I'm going to start with English and then I'm going with Spanish to explain and explain everything like we actually supposed to do it so let's start with the first thing I'm not going to do, uh, talk about like the controller or sensibility about like me or anything related so I'm going to give you my sensibility because it's working with a controller with long joysticks which make different uh, from normal controllers like for example this is a normal controller, as you can see. Joysticks are from PlayStation. It's official PlayStation controller. And the second one that I have here is my controller. So it's actually a scuff controller with long joysticks. As you can see, the joysticks are very long. The L2 and the R2 is actually different than the normal controller. And I don't use paddles. But this actually sensibility works with people who actually use paddles and long joysticks. The reason why I'm making this is because I've seen a ton, but like a lot of videos in YouTube and any other places about the sensibility they pros use to actually have success on this game on Apex, which makes me feel like I'm not 100% sure this actually works. Let me see. Um, I use a hybrid uh, sensibility compared to um, Game Burton because he's one of the top controller players in the game uh, and that makes him like so much better on the game. But the problem is he used this type of controller. So he doesn't use a SCOF or a Asteroid 40, uh, C40 controller, nothing like that. He used a normal controller from Battle Beaver that actually it just a normal controller in size as you can see the difference between both this controller is actually smaller than the other one as you can see the model is actually a scuff pro infinity f4 fps pro and the reason i buy that one is actually because it looks like a ps4 controller and the reality is it's totally different when you're talking about sensibility with long joysticks. Why? The reason is you're actually not moving completely here. So when you move your joystick, you're going to move less time than you suppose. So you actually don't have like completely movement and you don't have completely like turning around and everything compared with the controller that is actually a long joystick that you have to manage slowly compared with the controller the normal controller so you have to be more more um better to grab it if not you're not going to have success as controlling this type of controller that's the only reason that most of the people fail when you actually to put a sensibility because the mechanic change a little bit with the joystick that's why we need to change this perspective so the reality is that simple as that we don't need to make a ton a ton of high sensibility because we actually can use a joystick longer and we actually move freely compared with the controller, the normal controllers. So this actually works in an Expo controller that is actually with long joysticks too. And it not just the PS4, but I'm actually a main um, PS4 controller and I've been using it for about a week, the whole sensibility, working out how I actually I can manage. So let's go with the most important part, show the whole sensibility how the type of sensitivity I use in what's when I was normal controller and I didn't use LIC 
So my sensibility was on looking was six, five to look ADS. Classic look that song was um, large to actually have more stability when you're actually shooting. And the movement is going to be large. The reason that I use large in movement that zone is because, yes, it gives you more fluent when you're actually moving. And and it actually doesn't drift when you're, touching the, when you're not touching basically the controller. So the drift is actually the input or your controller. A lot of controllers have the same problem most of the time that they could the drift, the game started like drifting. The reason is simple. Um, because, yeah, mostly are just uh, very used controllers and most of the people are like uh, damage their own controllers when they use it. Sometimes it because you actually move too quickly, sometimes because you move too slow and you lift them down and or something break or anything. It just it's because of that. So it's be, it's also getting worse the controller when you actually start using it and it have a long time the controller. That's why it actually get like that. But today I'm going to show you how to manage that. So we go to uh, custom controllers and we put it on. The only reason that I would change this, the dead zone of the controller, I would probably, right now I'm using 20% because my controller is getting old. So it have like two or three years old. And it's actually, I have to use 20%, but most of the people can use it at 50, 60, or 10. I recommended that, you know. If you actually have a new controller, if you don't have a really, really good controller or you have a normal controller and you put some um, control freak that actually works too for having high sensibility or the jo long joysticks, I recommend always to carry a little bit more than the dead zone just to have um, more stability when you're actually moving. It doesn't drift and it actually doesn't get problem, you know. The other three home is actually the way the joystick is actually around it. So we got the dead zone that is actually the input that we put from the middle to the outside. The outer three holes um, is actually the one who give you the whole mobility from outside. So it's coming from outside to inside. So it's actually the combination of both mm -hmm. sides that actually makes together like this way to actually give you more stability when you're actually using the controller. I don't use response curve, so it's actually linear um, type of um, sensibility. When you're actually using like um, classic, you're going to be using a 10. You can see also over here that the, the, the response curve change when you actually make it. And I'm going to show you real quick how this actually can be different, you know? You can feel like a lot of difference. You see the shots that are actually not moving co completely and we actually take off the response curve. And you see that the controlling way is actually better when you're actually using no response curve in linear. Because you're still using, uh, you know, aim assist that you actually, is over here. The target compensation is actually the aim assist. You can take it off too if you want. Um, a lot of people won't recommend it, but if you want to try like your real sensibility and your real skills is actually not bad for using the, the no target compensation. The melee target compensation is actually like a little aim assist to when you actually using your, um, in my case, chikunai or punches or, or kick, you know? See how we actually you can manage 
the mobility straight to the character. Yeah, that's actually the melee target compensation. But that's not a problem either. You can actually take it off and go into play normally. Yeah, in some cases, in when you're just kicking, the sensibility for compensation melee change quite a bit and actually give you more stability for like making the melee, but not when you actually normally. So it's basically like, if you turn it off, it's basically like PC with keyboard and mouse. Oh, by the way, I'm actually playing on PC and not playing on control um PS4. So the sensibility or the aim assist that I have is too lower uh, compared to a um, PS4. And that's actually give you more advantage to console players because yeah, this sensibility actually take off the whole, whole, whole recoil from the weapons. And you actually like can actually manage and have better uh, shooting with the uh, with that sensitivity and returning back to actually the the first stuff so we actually have here two things we got the looking sensitivity and the ads sensitivity this is the first one the jump speed is actually the way you move left and right this is the most important thing to actually manage the second one is actually the pinch uh, steam that is actually the up and down. This actually, when you're actually using um, long joysticks, I recommend to get in lower than 500. Game Burton, for example, use 500 in both sides. And I really don't recommend it. Why? You have a long joystick that is actually, you need to manage more and control better the whole way you actually use in the controller. And this pinch speed actually changed completely that and it's actually not that good. So I always recommend it to lower at least a little bit the pitch speed. That's the only thing that I recommend. You can actually manage between uh, 380 to 420. That's the only reason that I put in a scale to actually make a lot, a lot of way to have the sensitivity completely like human aim, but to up and down. You can actually track a great and a great way controller, and you can track the enemies perfectly without any problems. When you actually 500, you have to be um, depending too much from the ADS. So that's why I'm actually like, nah. I mean, you can actually do like um, hip fire with, with this sensibility, and with your weren't not having problems at all. The John speech I put in on. 800 uh, 480 um, because I don't like the 500 it's also moved too quickly to left side for full size so I recommend to just keep it like 480 these ones we turn it off completely and the explanation that Gern Burton do is actually uh, this give you an extra mobility to your sensibility that is basically the yaw and the pitch and it actually makes sense because when you're actually turning extra jaw you're going to have the sensibility that you have plus the sensibility extra from your from a virtualized mouse so yeah it doesn't give you too much aim so it's actually the movement is extra and that's actually not worth it the ramp up and the ramp up delay is actually the way you actually apply both uh, jump pitch. So we take it up to zero, so we actually don't have any type of delay or timer when you're actually moving. So the response is actually quick and simple. That's the reason that we actually turn it off the, all this part. The same thing happens with the ADS. We turn it off everything from there because we don't need a delay or a timer to actually move and take time to move you know we need to be quickly fast because apex legend is a fast fence game and we don't need that in our game so in the ads jaw speed and the shift speed i play a lot with this because i think the most important thing for a controller player is when you're using ads in different ways so 
Game Burton used one, one, 130 jump pitch uh, and 130 um, pitch speed to actually manage to his mobility. So he actually got a straight aim. But the problem with this one is actually the same thing that we actually have, like with the jump pitch. We need mo more mobility with John long joysticks. Just the reason why is because we need to focus more in small details to actually manage a great mobility, which make it more skillful a player. The same thing happens in Fortnite and many other games. So we actually need to hire a little bit more than supposed to be 130 that can virgin have. And we got four more spaces, like the John is actually 170. And I leave the pitch speed um, up and down when you actually aim to actually move more quickly. So we keep it like that. We use target compensation and melee compensation to actually manage this way, you know? And that's basically what it is, you know? And you can see, I'm going to show you now how it's actually why it's different and why it gives you a lot of mobility and great aim. We got the Rampage here that is actually one of the lowest fire rate weapons that on the game. Um, we had to first kill the first. We don't need to control completely the joystick. And you can see it's actually managed over there. You see the mobility from the from the recoil or the movement of the weapon. But when you actually close, you actually don't feel anything. Right? The same thing happens in mid-range. The weapon have a, for, a way to actually manage and it actually change. One of the hardest recoil to control in this game is actually the flatline. Even if it's the better one. But for PC players or keyboard and mouse players, it's actually more easier to control. And you don't need to manage completely. And you're actually not going to miss a lot of shots. That's basically what it is, you know. You still have to control the details of the weapon, but you actually don't need to, like, completely make it worth it. So that's why the weapon and heavy is actually more easier to use with this type of control, uh, sensibility, you know? And different as the R99 and the 301 is actually a little more easier than it's supposed to be. As you can see there, how I actually can do like straight there. I'm not even like aim like aiming completely and just I'm not spamming the L2, the R2. And just literally over there. No problems. And now I'm going to show you how the R99 and hit five works here. As you can see, I didn't actually manage any type of mobility. Now it actually moved because we move it to the long way. But if we actually use this weapon, we just manage just a little bit to the lower side, and that's all. Simple as that. So we actually can control more quickly the weapon. You still have to learn how any type of weapon works. But it's actually give you the whole complete the way to do it. En este video vamos a estar hablando referente a cómo mejorar tu sensibilidad en Apex Legends para jugadores con análogos o joysticks altos. La mayoría de la gente o mayoría de los profesionales utilizan una sensibilidad que ellos se adaptan y ya, punto, y se acabó. Pero no te dicen que realmente cómo utilizas un control. Más bien te dicen, este es mi control, así lo utilizo, y la mayoría utiliza controles normales o controles scoff con eh, joystick bajito. La mayoría no utiliza joystick alto, así que la mayoría no lo utiliza y yo te voy a enseñar cómo 
realmente utilizar una sensibilidad que te va a beneficiar para un jugador con joystick alto. Aquí tú puedes comparar la joystick alto. Aquí tú puedes comparar los joystick bajitos. Mira la diferencia entre ambos controles que te van a beneficiar. La idea de jugar con joystick alto realmente es para minimizar eh, movimientos completamente raros y te ayuda y te beneficia a, realmente a moverte a más detalle. O sea, tú puedes mover el joystick más rápido o puedes mover el joystick más lento y no va a cambiar casi el movimiento que tú estás utilizando. Tal vez sí cambia el movimiento para controlarlo cuando cambias muy rápido constantemente el movimiento del joystick. Ahí sí cambia. Pero de lo contrario, no cambia tanto. Ahora, la mayoría de la gente no busca detalles, busca efectividad. Y realmente en ese preciso momento, en cierto modo tiene razón. Es la idea de jugar un juego, jugar bastante bien y jugar competitivo es ser efectivo. Pero si no utilizas los pequeños detalles que es lo que te ayuda a mejorar en el juego, entonces, ¿cuál es el punto entonces de ser efectivo? Aquí llega el punto donde tenemos un joystick control alto. Aquí, ahora yo te voy a utilizar, te voy a dar mi sensibilidad que está funcionando y que te va a ayudar a mejorar por completo en el juego de Apex Legends con joystick alto. Este video se trata de no solamente utilizar la información de joystick bajito que básicamente eh, la mayoría de los jugadores utiliza esta no esta es más bien alta para entonces darte pequeños detalles mejor y mucho mejor más efectivo muy bien así que vamos ahora entonces al área de enseñar cómo es la sensibilidad pero primero que nada tienen que recordar un pequeño detalle yo utilizo una sensibilidad de game Burton o uno de los mejores jugadores de control de Apex. Yo la utilizo híbrida. Utilizo su forma de administrar toda la sensibilidad. Excepto que empiezo a cambiar ciertos detalles. Para mejorar en el aspecto de izquierda a derecha. Y lo que le llaman el dead zone. O la capacidad de mover del joystick. Así que vamos a empezar. Bueno, vamos a estar hablando de la sensibilidad. Cómo nos podemos mover con sensibilidad de este tipo de sensibilidad vamos a estar explicando verdad por qué es que yo utilizo este tipo de sensibilidad bueno mi sensibilidad antes de ser el ALS era 6 5 clásico large y large el look de eso era como nosotros mirábamos el, el, el juego el movement de eso es cuando nosotros realmente utilizamos la pistola y dejamos la sin ningún tipo de movimiento el personaje, o sea, ahí entonces muchos controles empiezan a verse así que empiezan a hacer, mirarse para la izquierda o mirar para, el, para la derecha así que nosotros utilizamos large para que entonces ese tipo de input no se moviera y no tuviéramos problemas en esa parte muy bien utilizamos entonces el costume controller y lo ponemos en on aquí es donde hay mucha diferencia para los tipos de, de controles, si estás utilizando scuff y tu control lleva más de dos años o tres años de uso yo te recomiendo que utilices un, un dead zone por encima un poquito por encima no mucho de la línea mínima que utiliza este tipo de de ALC o sensibilidad la idea del dead zone es básicamente utilizarse para cómo manejar o cómo tú hundes y mueves el joystick para arriba o para abajo, para izquierda o derecha. Y cómo reacciona el joystick exactamente para eso. El Auto eh, Trick Show es actually, es realmente como tal, la rueda de la parte de afuera. Qué tan grande se hace para ampliar el movimiento del joystick. Y básicamente lo utilizamos al mínimo. Porque no hace falta ponerlo largo. O sea, si lo ponemos largo. Mira, aquí tú ves la diferencia entonces. Cómo se ve donde es que se va a mover así que el joystick apenas se va a mover y no necesitamos eso en el juego necesitamos movernos no muy bien la respuesta de curva la puse básicamente en nada más y nada menos que lineal o sea cuando tiene cero de curva 
básicamente no tiene nada, nada, absolutamente nada de tipo de, de, de sensibilidad. O sea, utilizas, cuando está en 10, tú utilizas el clásico, que es el básico que trae el juego. Pero realmente con cero tú lo pones en lineal y realmente no necesitas al 100% la sensibilidad como tal. De tener que ponerlo clásico para poder sentir la diferencia. Así que realmente yo puse eso. Mucha gente utiliza este tipo de sensibilidad, la cual a mí no me, no me agrada, primero que nada, porque tú cambiarle por completo esto, pues sí, en cierto modo tú cambias cada una de las sensibilidades dependiendo de tu estilo y tu movilidad, pero realmente estar cambiando mucho afecta también eh, el ADS y también afecta realmente a tu sensibilidad con Hi fire Así que yo lo tengo apagado. El jump pitch, o utilizo, básicamente la forma en cómo movemos de izquierda a derecha, yo lo pongo eh, al estilo Game Burton, que es 500, yo lo bajo 2, solamente 2, a 480, no mucho. La realidad es porque tú necesitas moverte de izquierda a derecha para hacer un buen track, o pues, para poder mantener un nivel de cómo moverte a, en, buscando a los enemigos. Esta sensibilidad realmente es más bien la sensibilidad de mirar, no es la de apuntar y disparar. Más bien esta sensibilidad se utiliza cuando te estás moviendo izquierda a derecha normalmente. Y esto te da movilidad por completo cuando vas a moverte con control. Pero esta sensibilidad también se utiliza cuando estás utilizando eh, tiros de cadera, lo que hace que el tiro de cadera eh, sea más efectivo de izquierda a derecha, así que te puedes mover si la persona se mueve. Si lo usamos bien bajito, realmente la persona no tiene ningún tipo de movilidad. Así que utilizamos la más al, de las más altas posibles para poder no movernos de izquierda a derecha a la perfección. El pitch speed básicamente es la forma en cómo nos movemos de arriba hacia abajo. Cuando utilizamos joystick alto, siempre, siempre yo no voy a recomendar utilizarlo en 500. ¿Por qué? La sensibilidad de, que de arriba hacia abajo afecta, se afecta mucho cuando realmente utiliza este tipo de sensibilidad eh, en 500. Así que yo recomiendo bajarlo un poco. Ah, yo lo bajé a 400 porque se siente más cómodo para arriba y para abajo. Y cuando realmente estás haciendo tiros de cadera, mayormente los tiros de cadera los vas a hacer cerca de la persona. No vas a apuntar realmente. Así que... Lo mejor que podemos hacer es bajarlo para que cuando tú muevas el joystick no tengas tanto problema en disparar de cadera. Y que no se mueva para arriba y para abajo que parece que está moviendo un mouse por completo para arriba y para abajo porque te, te paniqueaste. O sea, te dio miedo y no. Muy bien. Así que realmente utilizamos 400 aquí. En esto es fácil. Esto es básicamente la, es un extra a la sensibilidad que tienes aquí. Y esto afecta realmente a tu, completamente tu velocidad y afecta a tu sensibilidad también. Así que yo lo pongo todo en cero con la intención de que no tenga nada extra. Si me voy a mover a esta sensibilidad, que sea esa sensibilidad y no algo adicional. Aquí el time es cuánto tiempo yo me tardo en hacer este tipo de movimiento. Así que no necesitamos eso. Y el delay es cuánto tiempo se tarda en responder el movimiento del joystick y no necesitamos un delay para qué tú quieras un delay en el movimiento cuando realmente este juego se basa en moverse rápido efectivo y preciso ahora vamos para la 10 en la 10 utilizamos el joe pitch que básicamente es el que es la derecha cuando te estás apuntando game burton que es básicamente el híbrido que utilicé de la sensibilidad lo utiliza en 170, pero Game Burton lo utiliza en 130. La razón, su joystick es más bajito. Esa es la única razón por la cual él usa 130. Porque entonces cuando apunta, esa sensibilidad se añade a el tiro de cadera. Lo que hace mucho menos efectivo el tiro de cadera. Y el ADS lo hace mucho más alto. Es por eso que esa razón... La LA10 tiene que ser un poco más alto en el sentido de tenerlo bajito. 
Porque cuando apuntas el ADS, el movimiento del joystick se añade al ADS. Y entonces se mueve un poco más lento porque estás apuntando y estás siendo más preciso exactamente donde quieres ir a disparar. Así que ponemos bastante bajito comparado con el tiro de cadera. Así que utilizamos 170 en comparación con Game Burton. Y el, y el Pitch Speed lo dejamos como realmente él lo puso. Él lo puso en 130 y nosotros lo dejamos ahí mismo también. Porque entonces el ADS cuando apuntas hacia arriba y hacia abajo puedes traquear a 130 a la perfección. No necesitas cambiar absolutamente nada. Muy bien. También quitamos por completo la misma explicación que dimos para el tiro de cadera. También tendrías el mismo problema y afectaría tu, la forma de disparar cuando tú estás apuntando. Y obviamente utilizamos el aim assist. Porque pues somos jugadores de control. Y de, la gente dice, ah, oh, depende mucho del aim assist. No, realmente no. La asistencia de tiro no es algo que te afecte. Es algo que también te puede, no te puede beneficiar. Y así es como se ve la sensibilidad cuando la mueve. La forma más fácil de controlar sería entonces Flatline, que sería mucho más fácil con este tipo de sensibilidad. Y esto te da cómodo para ¿ves? moverse más fluido en el aspecto de no depender tanto del tipo de tiro que haga como le pasaría entonces a, un, a, un, a una sensibilidad normal y el ID es pues aquí estamos haciendo ID es pero mira no necesitamos ID es para disparar con Winman de lejos y es por eso que uso este tipo de sensibilidad y espero verdad que les guste este video If you really enjoyed this type of content, don't forget to like, subscribe, to follow my social medias. Like, we got uh, Twitch, we got Facebook, we got YouTube, Rootland, Instagram, TikTok. Every single name that you find Daisho, you're going to find me and you can actually follow me and subscribe. And you actually, I always talk with my followers. I actually enjoy them to talk if they actually talk on, on any video. I'm going to talk with them, and that's basically what it is. So have a good one, and see you homies later.